Good afternoon. My name is Dr. Petrikovsky. I'm a professor of obstetrics and gynecology, and this is my third talk on coronavirus and pregnancy. I want to make a disclaimer that my views do not represent the views of any institutions uh, where I am privileged to work and see patients. Uh, what we're going to do today is we'll make another uh, update and review on coronavirus and pregnancy and coronavirus in general, because that's pretty much what everybody is talking about. Now, it's very important to understand that our, uh, our understanding of what goes on changing is changing from day to day as we gain more experience in the pandemic. Uh, what I would like to start with is to give you a very brief chronology on how, how it started. On December 1st, at the first time when the first symptomatic patients was diagnosed in China, it took 21 days, three weeks, when there was a growing indication in China on person-to-person -person transmission. So in three weeks, they realized that this particular virus can be transmitted from an individual to an individual. <clears throat> On December 30th, which is one day later, Chinese doctors share their concerns that a new virus is, is, is on the horizon and it could be contagious. On January 1st, a doctor in China alerts the hospital that there is person-to-person -person transmission. And he was reprimanding by the government for spreading rumors. And only on January 6, Chinese CDC activates emergency response, which still was not publicly announced. On January 14th, which is a while after the first patient was diagnosed and after it was clear that we're dealing with something unusual and potentially dangerous, National Health Commission had a meeting uh, regarding the virus, but it was not publicly disclosed. And it's not till February 3rd when Chinese foreign ministry start accusing United States government of inappropriately, inappropriately relating to the outbreak. So clearly, the, my topic is not political, but it's very important for the epidemiology of the virus and how it started. And to me, it brings the memories of a Chernobyl nuclear accident that took place in Russia, Ukraine, in 1986, and the government trying to hide it for a very, very long time, endangering their own population as well as the world. <clears throat> now, very briefly, uh, we now know more about the epidemiology of the coronavirus, and I would like to summarize it for you. The attack rate is between 30 and 40 percent, which is very high. Case fatality rate is between 1 and 3 percent, and I don't need to mention because everybody knows that this particular virus uh, mostly causes severe damage to the patients or people with pre-existing condition and elderly. Uh, in medicine, we used to operate with the terms called evidence-based medicine, which requires significant research. This particular pandemic is developing so fast that it's very hard to collect enough data for a solid, uh, for a solid judgment regarding treatment and prevention. But I would like to share with you a very important paper published recently in New England Journal of Medicine that has to do, that is really very practical and has to do with how stable this particular virus is. Coronavirus, and that's according to the article, is more stable on plastic and stainless steel surfaces than on cardboards. 
and obviously uh, the time the time that the virus can survive on the surfaces is from seven hours to 72 hours and in some cases uh, it can actually be still detected days after the virus appeared on the surface. Uh, so therefore, those things really need to be taken into serious consideration that uh, the surfaces, plastic surfaces, metal surfaces, remain the source of potential infection for a prolonged period of time. Now what I would like to do is to go into the recent updates and this is from the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology that relates to how we change our obstetrical practice uh, and patient care when it comes to coronavirus. And again, uh, very important to understand that what I'm telling today may not be 100% accurate for tomorrow because as we learn more about it, we change our medical opinion and we change our tactics. Most hospitals now don't allow any visitations. So the ladies who go into labor, unfortunately, have no support of the husband, partner, or significant other. Uh, regarding wearing masks for pregnant ladies, according to the American College of OBGYN, Masks are recommended only in patients with symptoms uh, or confirmed infection. So we're talking about patients in the hospitals. Now, as I said before, that may change as well. What's very important, and that's uh, stressed by the recommendation by American College of OBGYN, is that prenatal care should continue. All non-essential appointments may be rescheduled or postponed, but pregnant ladies need to continue uh, seen by their healthcare providers. Sometimes and in our practice, we'll start to implement telemedicine. For certain patients, telemedicine is acceptable, but sometimes patients need to come to the office for testing, uh, ultrasound and other procedures. Regarding labor, the first report, and I actually talk about it in one of my previous talks, all patients in China with coronavirus were subjected to cesarean sections. Now, according to the ACOC recommendation, there is no scientific base to recommend C-section for patients with coronavirus. So therefore, a vaginal delivery is definitely something that can be undertaken. Regarding blood banking, because obviously uh, there was a long tradition and some patients are uh, very interested in preserving fetal cord blood. As, as per the recommendation from American College of OBGYN, it still may continue because there is no evidence so far at this moment there is any viral contamination in the fetal cord blood. So for, for now, that practice may go on. American College of OBGYN recommend expedited discharges. So with, the, with an idea that patient can leave the hospital after normal delivery within one day, after C-section, even after two days, provided patient condition permits it. So clearly we try to limit the exposure of the pregnant lady or patients who already delivered to the potential uh, uh, infection with the coronavirus. Uh, I really wish you to stay well, st stay safe, and if needed, we'll make further updates. Thank you for your attention.